Hello everyone and welcome to week three of the Hotel Management English class. Um, today we are going to be studying Unit 2A, um, which is about the check-in. Well, actually today's lesson is more about the reservation um, and making reservations. Um, before we start, um, just two announcements I would like to make. Um, first of all, as of now, lectures are due to start next week, but this could change. So we, we don't know for certain, but as of now, I am recording this video on Thursday, April the 2nd. So maybe things might change by next week, but let's hope we can be back in the classroom for next week's class. Um, also, please upload your assignment files to the e-learning website. Do not send them to me by email. Um, they must be on the website for you to have your attendance um, checked for that lesson. So everyone upload to the website. I have another slide here again just about using the video um, when you can pause and rewind. And today's class materials, you will need your textbook and you need two documents from the e-learning website. Those documents are the PDF file of today's PowerPoint slides and today's assignment worksheet. And you'll see you have three parts to complete today. So. Um, you should download these before we start um, the lesson. Now, um, just before we go on to today's lesson, I want to go over some of the answers from last week's video. Um, so, um, I've not read everything yet, um, but I have seen a few of the assignments so far and the quality has been very high, so well done. So I just want to go over some parts that I noticed there were some small problems and I think we can um, go over some example answers and hopefully you can see why you had some problems. So the first part was to uh, make some sentences describing five of the 10 jobs in your um, textbooks. So what was really important here were these verbs. What they do, takes, orders, makes cocktails. You'll notice I'm using the S ending on the verbs. That's because we're talking about another person. It's like using he or she. So I take orders, but she takes orders. I make cocktails, he makes cocktails. So when we were making these answers, I think that was an important thing to remember. So I've given some other examples here. So a commissionaire welcomes guests and gives information to guests. So usually you see the commissionaire at the front of the building before you go in. A sous chef cooks food and creates new dishes. So again, cooks, creates. I also gave the example, a waitress serves food and gives the bill to customers. So there's two duties of a waitress. And the last one of my examples I gave, a porter carries luggage and shows guests to their rooms. So they were just five examples. Um, hopefully you can see um, if you've made some mistakes, where you've made those mistakes and maybe try to fix them. Um, the next part we looked at was listening last week. We had five questions and these were the answers. So where is Neve from? Well, the answer was she's from Ireland. Which part of France is Akun from? Well, he's from Nice, 
in the south of France. So I think really the part of France would be the south of France. The city would be Nice. Now this one here, I noticed some people um, not using yes or no in the answer. It was beginning, is Taki from Italy? Is he from Italy? Well, it could only be yes, he is, or no, he isn't. So in this answer, it was no, he isn't, he's from Greece. We also had, where is Yoshida from? Well, he's from Japan. And again, number five was just a yes or a no answer. Is Sean from Australia? Yes, he is. So those were the answers to that part. The um, next part was about formal English questions. Now, other answers are possible, but just here are some examples. So what's your name? It's too direct. So we should say to the customer, may I have your name, please? Or could you tell me your name, please? So. Again, where are you from is too direct, so could you please tell me where you're from? Or may I ask where you are from? What's your date of birth? We could change, can I have your date of birth, please? Or could you tell me your date of birth? May I have your date of birth, please? What's your phone number? Too direct again, so could you tell me your phone number, please? Um, may I ask for your phone number, please? And what's your job? May I ask what you do for a living? Or could you tell me your job, please? So there's kind of three or four main ways that we can make these questions formal. May I have or may I ask? Um, could you tell me or um, can, it, can you tell me um, as well? Do you mind if I ask? So there are a few different ways to do it. Um, I think these are some good examples. So the other part of assignment one um, at the end of last week, um, I think mostly was um, quite good. Um, so we can move on, I think, from last week's assignment and go on to our lesson today, which is part of the check-in in, in Unit 2. But we're going to concentrate today on Part A about making a reservation. So we'll be learning about the types of rooms in a hotel, read an email inquiring about a reservation, listen to a conversation relating to um, a, a, res a reservation and perform a role play as receptionist and guest. Well, we won't be performing. We'll be writing that out today. So we're going to start with some room types here. Now, when you work in a hotel, you will see that we use a lot of abbreviations. Now, what is an abbreviation? Now, an abbreviation is just when we make a, a word much shorter and we maybe use a letter instead of the word. So I'm sure lots of you have heard things like LOL or OMG. Well, they are just abbreviations. LOLs, laugh out loud. OMG, oh my God. So that's what we mean by an abbreviation. It saves a little bit of time when we're writing things down. So in a hotel, we've got some um, abbreviations we use for rooms. So some examples, S2 would be a twin room, like two single beds, I think. S2D would be a double room, twin beds. DA, deluxe double. S, a single room. FD is a one bed suite. D is a double room with one bed. So. These kind of things are useful to know, and some hotels maybe do it in a little bit of a different way. They have different abbreviations, but they're quite useful and they make it easier for you when you're making or taking a reservation. You don't need to write full words. We can just use that abbreviation. And we'll notice this 
in your textbook, you will see you've got a booking chart. They've got S bath. Well, S is a single room and it must have a bath. D shower. Hmm, we know D is a double room. Oh, double room with shower. So uh, when we're reading these kind of room charts, it can be quite, quite useful to use these abbreviations. So what we're going to do now is quickly read an email from Mr. Bouvier. And we're going to think, is there a room available for him? So we can see this is our reservation chart here. We've got our dates. We've got our rooms. And let's read. Dear sir or madam, I'd like to reserve a double room with bath from 18th to 21st of July, if possible, with a balcony. Yours sincere, sincerely, Jacques Bouvier. So he, first of all, wants a double room with bath. Now, double room with bath? Nope. Double room with bath? Nope. Double room with bath? Yes. So double room with bath and balcony? Excellent. He said, if possible, with a balcony. So now we need to, we found the room. Let's check the dates from 18th to 21st of July. Here's the 18th. Here's the room. Here's the 21st. So is there a room available? Yes, there's a room available here. Room 437 from the 18th to 21st of July. So there we can see how we can use these room charts. We've got our abbreviations here and we can check the availability of that, that room. We'll also notice this is a very formal um, email starting again, dear sir or madam, very polite language and a great way to finish. Yours sincerely, Jacques Bouvier. So even though it's a, a guest, they're using some very good language that you should also be using when you are um, writing to um, a guest. OK, let's move on. Now, let's listen to something here. Um, Mr. Bouvier wants to change his reservation. So everybody look again at the room chart. Let's see if this is possible. So everyone, let's listen to the conversation. Unit two, the check-in. 2.2, exercise two. Hello, Globe Hotel, can I help you? Yes, I have a reservation from the 18th to the 21st of July for a double room with bath and balcony. And your name, please, sir? Bouvier. Could you spell that for me, please? Yes, that's B-O-U-V-I-E-R. I would like to change the dates, if possible, from the 19th to the 22nd of July. Hold the line a moment and I'll just check, Mr Bouvier. But I think that's possible. From the 19th to the 22nd, did you say? Yes, that's right. I'm just checking. The 19th to the 22nd. Yes, that's fine, Mr Bouvier. A double with bath and balcony for three nights from the 19th to the 22nd. Thank you. So that's fixed up then? Yes, it's done, Mr Bouvier. We look forward to welcoming you on the 19th. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. OK, so I think that's uh, quite a common type of conversation you may um, have when people are wanting to change their reservation. And hopefully everybody noticed that it was fine. There's no problem to change the reservation. So we could go back into our room chart and we can change this because now he wants from the 19th to the 22nd and we can see that room is still available there. 
So we can erase the 18th and mark in Mr. Bouvier in to the, from the 19th to the 22nd. Okay, I've also included the conversation here um, because I think it could be quite useful, especially when it comes to later in today's class and you have to create a dialogue um, about reservations. So there's lots of useful um, language here. There's a nice welcome. Hello, Globe Hotel, can I help you? Um, nice way to end, thank you, goodbye. And also, and your name, please, sir. Um, could you spell that for me, please? A lot of this is going to be useful in those conversations later. So again, if you want to listen again, that's good. Uh, maybe you can listen and read, read along with the conversation here. Okay, so let's move on today. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about today is dates. And a lot of people have some trouble talking about dates. Um, it's very, very different in different languages. I know in Korean, the way people give dates is very, very different from the way we do it in English. So we're going to practice this a little bit. Now, if we look at these days and dates, we are going to think about them and I'm going to be reading through them. So we've got the seven days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So th these are really important because sometimes people get mixed up and by using the day before the date, it can make it a lot clearer for, for people. So here, for example, if we look at this date, we can say Monday, 1st of January. Ma Monday, 1st of January. So here we've got Wednesday, 17th of January. Down here we've got Saturday, 6th of January. So always good to give the day and then the date. So we've got some other dates here. We've got the 1st of January, 2nd of February, 3rd of March, 4th of April, 5th of May, 6th of June. 7th of July, 8th of August, 9th of September, 10th of October, 11th of November, 12th of December. So 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. So when we're saying these dates, it's not just the number, we're, we're using the ordinal, 1st, 5th, 10th. Um, when we write as well, sometimes we've got them here. We've got other dates like 21st, 31st, 2nd, 22nd, 23rd, 4th, 24th. So it's really important that we practice saying these dates. They are really important when we're making reservations and also checking reservations um, as well. When the guest tells you the dates that they would like to reserve, it's always good to speak those dates back to the, the guest just to confirm that, that you've got the things correct. So we're going to practice a little bit how to say some dates. Um, I've got five questions and I want you to write five answers in your assignment worksheet. So. If you look in your worksheet, you've got the five questions, you've got space to write your five answers, and you should answer them using either a day, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or a date, Monday the 1st of January, or it could also be a general time, like summer vacation, or spring, or something like that as well. So. Your five questions are, what's today's date? What's your day off? When is the next national holiday, like a red day? 
when do you go on holiday and when's your birthday so everybody this is a good time i think to pause the video and fill in your answers in the assignment worksheet Okay, we are going to go on to do some email responses. So if you have a look on page 13 of your textbook, you will see um, a response to Mr. Bouvier. And we're going to read through that email response um, to confirm his reservation. So again, we start nice and formal, dear Mr. Bouvier. Further to our earlier telephone conversation, we are pleased to confirm your new booking as follows. So a nice way to um, start here. Then we're giving the details of the reservation. So arrival 19th of July, departure 22nd of July. Room type, double room with bath and balcony. Room rate, $189. Confirmation, JU19 FD1408. So there we've got all the important information for the guest. And then we finish our um, email with, we look forward to welcoming you on the 19th of July. Yours sincerely, James Payton at the Royal Hotel or the Globe Hotel, sorry. So this is um, a good example of how to write um, an email response to a guest. So we're going to try and do the same. Um, we're going to read um, Mrs. Song's email and she wants to make some changes. So what changes does she want to make first of all? So Dear Sir or Madam, I have a reservation for two nights, the 12th and 13th July, for a single room with bath. I would like to change the dates, if possible, to the 15th and 16th of July. So, she's already booked from the 12th and 13th. She wants to go to the 15th and 16th. Let's go back. Now, Miss Sung, single room with bath. Here is the 12th and 13th. Okay. When does she want to change to? The 15th and 16th. Okay. Is this possible? 15th, 16th. Yes. So these two um, dates are free. So, it is possible. Good. So we now know it is possible. Now what we're going to do is write a response to Miss Sung. So in your textbook, we can see a reply. However, the reply is all in the wrong order. So what we should do is look at the different parts of the reply and try to put them into the correct order. So obviously, number one is going to be Dear Ms. Sung. That's going to be the end. The, sorry, <laughs> that is going to be the start. I think we can say this will be the end. So how many do we have? One, two, one, two. Three, four, five, six, eleven things. So this is going to be number eleven. All of the other things um, are in the wrong order. So what we should do first is try to put them into the correct order by giving them some numbers. Then, once you have done that, I would like you to look here and I would want you to write the full email, your email reply to Ms. Song. So all of the information is already here. You just need to find the correct order of the parts 
and then write them in a full email to Ms. Song. So everybody, this is a good time to pause the video and write your reply in the assignment worksheet. Okay, now we are going to um, create a dialogue. Um, the dialogue is going to have two, pe two people. Person A is the desk clerk. They will ask questions about the type of reservation the customer would like. Person B is a guest that is trying to book a room. They will have a card with the travel requirements on it. So the desk clerk, well, you have to ask for this information. You have to find the guest's name, the spelling of their name, the room type, number of nights they'll be staying and how they are going to pay. The guest, well, here is your information. You are traveling with your husband or wife, so you can choose whoever it is. You would like a double room with balcony on June 6th. You want to stay for four nights. You want to pay with Visa card. So that is the information that you have to use. And this is the information that the desk clerk needs to get. So this is all the information we need. Um, what you're going to do is look in your assignment um, worksheet and you can write your answers here. So person A is going to be the desk clerk or receptionist. Person B will be the guest. Now, everyone, you should remember to greet the guest and give a suitable ending to the conversation. So rather than just starting, could you tell me your name, please? No, we would think about how we would greet the guest. Um, welcome to Globe Hotel. How may I help you? Something like that. The same when it comes to the end. Think about how this conversation would usually end. So um, that is our um, last assignment part for today. Um, take your time, everybody. Follow the instructions that I, I gave you here um, and try to do your, your best. Okay, um, so we'll quickly review some of the things we learned today. So at the beginning, we learned about some types of rooms in the hotel, single, and we had the double room with balconies. We looked at the types of information needed when inquiring about a reservation, um, Mr. Bouvier, and also with the listening, um, they asked a lot of the questions that um, gave the information required. And then at the end there, we used all of this information to create that dialogue um, about making a reservation. So um, I hope you all found this um, useful. So everyone, please remember to upload your assignment files to the e-learning website. Try to check them carefully, make sure everything is complete before you upload them. Next week's class is looking at the second part of Unit 2, so Unit 2B, it's about the check-in. We'll be um, looking more about formal and informal English. We'll look at conversations related to checking in. We'll be learning some useful language you can use to speak to guests and we'll be completing some check-in conversations. So let's hope classes are back in school next week. Um, um, thank you everybody for listening today. I hope you have a good week and I will see you next week. Goodbye.